Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl, and I know this video is slightly different. This year has definitely been different in general. I just wanted to create a video on a day in my life or a day behind the scenes on what I do on a day-to-day -day basis as traveling is no longer a thing. I spend way more time in the studio, so I thought this would be a fun little way to wrap up the year, and my day typically begins with a good old 7 a.m. wake up. The two essentials that I definitely need are both a shower, a little hit of coffee to wake me up, and I am super lucky because my girlfriend works right by my studio. We kind of commute together, and after I do drop her off, I'm kind of set to start my day. So now we've made it finally into this studio, and this is what organized chaos looks like. It's December, it's the middle of the gift guide season, so tech is everywhere, but we're gonna kind of come into the main area that I think most of you are actually familiar with. I can take the mask off now and my day kind of revolves around what's on deck. And today we've got the Paco M3. It's a budget device, I think this is around $130. So let's get into the hot seat, the normal set, and uh, we'll do our typical unboxing for the day. Boom, and I think this is kind of the view that a lot of you are familiar with. So for example, I've got my A camera set up here. We've actually got a B camera set up this way to get all of the B-roll shots. So the typical view in the studio here. So for example, this phone I'll typically unbox. We'll kind of do one live now, I guess. And up slides this, and this is typically my favorite part of the day. So I love unboxing products. It's kind of the reason why I started the channel. So we can see Paco branding. They're kind of branching out from the Xiaomi brand. And this is all the specs of this phone. It's a powerhouse for that $130 mark. And when you really look at budget phones, when you think about that, say the Pixel 4a, the OnePlus Nord, even say the iPhone SE, which are all technically budget, those are around $500. So to get a fully capable device at $130, I think that's super, super impressive. And we can kind of see some of the specs, for example. So a 48 megapixel camera, 6,000 milliamp hour battery. That is massive for a phone this size. We've got a 6.53 inch full HD, obviously quad HD isn't a thing at this price bracket, still half decent, and a Snapdragon 662. And we've also got 128 gigs of storage and four gigs of RAM. And usually those specs, once again, we'll come in at that four to $500 range. So I think that's pretty huge. My favorite part of the day slash any day is of course, unwrapping the plastic. Oh, it just sounds so silky, so smooth. And while that boots up, we'll kind of quickly see what we've got inside of the box. So we do have a full fast charging brick. So I've got the Euro on here. It depends on which region that you get it in. Always nice. For example, if you're buying a, thousand dollar iPhone, you still don't get a charging brick. And this is actually a fast charger. I think we've got a little wristband, so maybe we'll add it onto the wrist for the day. Some other rubber accessories. I'll keep those in the box, for example. But once again, that value, $130, you're getting a charger, you're getting a fully operating device. Typically, you would just get accessories or a cable for that kind of money in Apple. I'm once again looking at you. And as an example, I pulled out my USB-C cable from my Pro Display XDR. If you buy this thing in the store, I think Canadian pricing, so slight difference, $130. So would you rather have a cable or a smartphone? I think the answer is honestly pretty easy there. Even comes with a screen protector, that's super dope. We didn't get stickers, so I guess Apple has that. But I'm willing to give up stickers for having all of this for 130 bucks. You're gonna hear that a lot on this video. And the first thing that I usually talk about with any device review is typically the design. And when you take a look at the Paco M3, the back is made out of plastic. It's one of those sacrifices that they have to make. So this is in a almost faux leather finish, a bit plasticky, nothing to cry home about, but on the flip side, it won't collect any extra fingerprints. And the phone is rocking MIUI out of the box and that's over Android 10 and typically for setup, that's pretty simple. We'll quickly go through that. Okay, so I've got everything set up now, very typical Android setup. And when I'm kind of going through it, it moves decently quick. Once again, $130, maybe there's a slight hint of lag, but totally, totally usable. The first thing that I'll typically do now is download the go-to app. So that's a lot of social media, the trifecta, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and once again, the experience is decent. You know, there's those hints of lag, you know, multitasking, I'm gonna hit that you know, switching back and forth. 
Refreshing, oh, this is a cool photo. Actually, this is the spot that I wanna go to to test this camera, and we'll switch now back to, say, Twitter. So kind of going through that interface, you saw that it's a very tolerable experience, and I think this will really set the bar for that new budget level or that budget category. But the next important part for any smartphone testing is, of course, the camera. I think a lot of you wanna see some sample shots. We saw on Instagram a cool little spot here in Toronto. It's in the city. We can actually drive to it. It's outdoors, so we don't have to keep in mind all those restrictions. We will have to bear the cold. We can do it. So we'll head on over there and we'll take some sample shots with the camera. <laughs> Movie magic, switching there now. Boom. Okay, so right now we're in a place called Distillery District here in Toronto. It's a historical place. We've got a lot of exposed brick. It's an old shipping area, so perfect to get shots with the Paco phone. So it's got a triple lens setup, a 48 megapixel main. The two other lenses, I wouldn't cry home about them. So it has a two megapixel macro and a two megapixel depth sensor. So we'll kind of do a couple shots around here and see how the camera performs and enjoy all the Christmassy kind of scenery. Okay, so that's probably the last photo that we're gonna take. It's a bit cold, let's get back to the car. We can heat up and kind of scroll through some of the photos and see how good the quality is like. Let's get going. <laughs> so we're gonna blow up the photos on screen for you guys to check out. They've been pretty decent. I'm most impressed with the main sensor. I wouldn't cry home about the macro, dynamic range, Decent, it wasn't really tested too much because it was a bit cloudy, but once again, very, very competent for a phone that only cost 130 bucks. Okay, so after that enticing and enlightening photography tour, we are just pulling back into the studio. It is my favorite part of the day, lunchtime. Carl, so people always ask you in your comments, you know, how do you get those biceps? What kind of food should I be eating? What should my diet be like? What do you have to say to them today? I'm eating a very healthy lunch of a microwavable dinner, a pizza pocket, and a salad. So every food group that you can imagine. Next up on the docket, we like to shoot our B-roll. This is typically midday, so the sun is fairly consistent. So for this video, you can see Nick is getting some silky shots in the overhead rig. That's looking nice. There's the phone. Silky, silky. Disaster zone. So after recording all of that tasty B-roll comes the most unglamorous part of the day. It's currently two o'clock and now I will park myself in my trifecta setup, sit here probably for the next four to five hours and both edit and answer emails. And unfortunately, that's just the sad reality. As the channel begins to grow, the amount of time spending talking with brands, making those partnerships, making those brand deals work, because in the end, those do pay the rent. It helps drive the channel forward. I wish I could get a million to two million views and survive solely off of ad revenue. That's just not the case for most smaller creators, and I'm gonna consider myself a smaller creator compared to the big boys. 
And kind of the only thing that helps me get through this are, I guess, twofold, having a good chair, since I will be here now for the next four to five hours. And second, I usually just watch some EPL. I'm a big English Premier League fan. I just have that off to the side. So, so clutch when I'm hammering out those emails. And any brands, if I haven't got back to you, it's because my inbox is also a shit show. Okay, after a couple hours of editing, it is now nighttime, but we also just got a little delivery in the mail. It's the new AirPods Max. So super pricey headphones, $550, 770 Canadian. You could technically get four, four and a half, if my math is correct, M3s for the price of one pair of headphones. And I'm about to do something which I hate doing, which is late night shooting. We're about to crush a video so you can hopefully enjoy and be one of the first to see the AirPods Max, life of a YouTuber. Not exactly as glamorous as everyone always thinks it is. Let's crush this vid. Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl, and we've got them in the studio, the AirPods Max. So these just came out the other day, slash will be available for most of you coming, I think, early next week. But these new headphones from Apple kind of came out of left field, to be honest. I wasn't expecting any big drops. <sighs> okay, after that crazy, crazy edit slash post, hopefully you guys enjoyed my Air Max. Air Max, I'm kind of speaking in mumbo jumbo. The AirPods Max video. Now is kind of my time to decompress. I always try to sneak a workout in, so I'm just gonna listen to some music. This is also the time that I get to test out my headphones. So for example, I've got a pair from Sennheiser. I am going to crush like day, and hopefully after that, my day is done. <laughs> Okay, so after that quick workout, had to get that in and of course smash the AirPods Max edit. It is, hey Google, what time is it? The time is 9.58 p.m. 9.58, so we've been here for more than 12 hours. It is time for me to GTFO. Big thanks to Paco for sponsoring this episode just to show off what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, how I test out a new device. And we are sitting at 50% on the dot. I have been on this phone the entire day. So definitely decent, decent battery life. I just honestly need to get out of here. These lights are kind of blinding me just being here. It's so dark inside without them. It's real dark without them. It is nighttime. So clearly just going a tad bit crazy. So today has just been a typical day in the office for me. It doesn't really change too much. I haven't been able to travel, obviously, due to COVID, everything going on in the world. So I am stuck in this studio a lot. Just remember the life of a YouTuber or influencer, content creator, whatever you want to call it, isn't as glamorous as my Instagram feed, my YouTube videos. You only see a small little sliver. There's obviously a ton of work, but I love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. So I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this vid and saw what I do kind of behind the scenes other than you see my face on YouTube for five to six minutes a day and hope to catch you guys in those next five to six minutes on one of my next vids. Peace. Let's get out of here.